All right, a couple of notes from the two shows this weekend. We had Raquel and Aaliyah beating Shotzi and Zia Lee. So Aaliyah has moved on in this tournament with her partner, Raquel Rodriguez. And this match was fine. It was uh, it was fine. And then we had uh, Drew McIntyre coming out for a promo. And he talks about Karrion Cross attacking him. And then he starts talking about Roman Reigns with outcomes, Cross, and Scarlet. And I, I, I'm not quite sure exactly what's going on here. They distracted him, allowing the Usos to jump Drew McIntyre. So are they in cahoots? No one knows. Okay, well, we'll follow up on that. So uh, this led to uh, a match later on, as we'll get to here. We had a video package for the Intercontinental title, and then we had Kofi attacking the Viking Raiders and destroying them with kendo sticks. But then uh, the Raiders made their own comeback, and they destroyed Kofi, and they splashed him off the guardrail, and he was left for dead. Nothing like starting a fight as a babyface and getting your ass handed to you. But that's what happened here. We had the return of Hit Row, as expected, with B-Fab. They got B-Fab back here. And they defeated Brandon Scott and Trevor Irving. And uh, they destroyed him, minute 38. And they did a promo afterwards. If you guys saw the the original debut of uh, Hit Row, I think they just replayed it. Because it was basically exactly the same thing. They did the promo. They talked about who they were. uh, They showed people dancing to their music. And, uh, yeah, they're back. But what does this we're, mean? We're going to see most, how this goes. For most wanted treasures, what does this mean? Will A.J. Francis be back as the host of that show? You know what's funny about this? <laughs> he has Top Dalla comes locker. out. Go ahead. Top Dalla comes out. And, uh, by the way, uh, I think there was an interview with them, and they, they said that they were, like, on the top of the list when Hunter came back. And uh, he goes... <laughs> He said, uh, I love know, his I, confidence. <laughs> Holy crap. I wish I, I, I just, he shows, I just don't take anybody's crap. He says, I, he I stand up for myself. And he says, uh, he says, Hunter said, I never heard about any of this. So you start, you start with a clean slate. Okay, great. He's starting with a clean slate. Let's hope it stays clean. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, uh, top dollar comes out for this match and he's got an AJ Francis shirt on, which I guess it makes sense. It, well, it doesn't make sense because, uh, you know, they were out doing stuff, and Hunter apparently called him and said, how fast can you be ready for TV? And they were like, we'll be there this week. So I guess, you know, he'd been, he was going to wrestle as AJ Francis because he couldn't be top dollar. And so he just wore his indie gear on the show. Like, you threw out all of your top dollar stuff? <laughs> apparently he did. Well, maybe he's, I don't know. I don't know. I just, again, I always like Stokely Hathaway after he left WWE, did that, uh, he was doing the one man show thing or doing a stand up thing. It's like, remember, this was the guy that started a fight with the young bucks over sneakers. So it could, we'll see how That's it goes. Right, yeah. But, uh, that dude is a, look, he's a, he's a magnet, whether for good or bad. That man's a magnet. He's a personality. Now, whether that can be harnessed and made to be a good professional wrestler in a professional working environment as much as it can be, we'll see. But he is, if nothing else, a a, dis- a distinct and lively personality. We had a Ronda Rousey segment where she came through the crowd. She's like Steve Austin now. And she's got a bag full of money because she got fined. And she drops all this cash on the table because I guess she doesn't have a card. And uh, the security comes out to get her out of the building, and she beats up one of the security guards, but then she decides she's going to leave. So she's leaving, and she comes across Shayna Baszler's coming out of the ring, and Baszler's telling her, we, we don't do it like this. you got to just like follow the rules. You'll get what you want if you follow the rules. And Ronda says, you used to be a killer. And she walks off. And so there's going to be a contract signing with Liv Morgan and Shayna. Liv Morgan comes out. She's still got her giant brace on her arm. But apparently she's cleared, and uh, she gets in the ring. And there were there were some light you tapped out chance, but she was not like they weren't treating her like she was a full on heel or anything like that. And then uh, of course she gets attacked. Baszler beats her up, stomps on the bad leg. But then after all that, after all that, Liv bounces off the ropes, gives her the bulldog, puts her through a table. I was this was like this was like Vince McMahon booking here. 
I'm like, dude, no one thinks that Shayna has any chance of beating Liv. You got to give her something. And you give her a little, but then you lay her out at the end of the segment. I guess I got a few weeks before the show, but my God. Well. Then we had uh, Drew McIntyre versus the Usos. He commanded, or he demanded a match with them. And for a while, it was uh, one on two. He's getting beaten up. And then Madcap runs down, who, by the way, with Triple H in charge, is still Madcap. Even though the 76 year old guy who's the last guy on this planet to use the term Madcap. Gave him the stupid name. He should be Madman Moss. No. If, just... have, if you have to have mad in the name, it's better to be Madman Moss and Mad Cap. Why can't it just be Riddick Moss? Why you give him should a be nickname Riddick or Moss. whatever? Just, just Riddick Moss. That's fine. It, doesn't that sound, you know, I don't say, if it came up in the lab in NXT, you know, beats the hell out of J.D. McDonough. You know what I'm saying? So they had a uh, match, Madcap runs down, and they went for the uh, 1D, but one of the Usos got pulled out of the ring. McIntyre then hit Jimmy with the Claymore, pinned him. They actually beat the Usos. And then uh, he goes to give Jay the Claymore, but Sami Zayn takes the bullet because he still wants to be that honorary Us, and so he's he's dead. We had Los Lotharios hitting on Maxine Dupree. And she looked like she was interested. Which, you know, Triple That's H is not the one. a way to get one. to a tag match. <laughs> Triple H is not the one that put her with maximum male models. So I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if he split her off to manage them and had Max Dupree manage maximum male models. But I guess we'll find out what they do. And then the main event was uh, Gunther and Shinsuke Nakamura for the uh, Intercontinental title. They had a very good match. And it was more... A uh, Valter versus Nakamura match than a Gunter versus Nakamura match. They did a lot of things they would not have done with Vince there. It, it literally opens with Shinsuke giving him so many leg kicks that he kicks his legs out from under him. Which you know Nakamura did leg kicks and that sort of thing when when Vince was around. But I mean this was this was you know I'm gonna chop you, chop you, chop you until you collapse. And then he goes to work on on uh, the arm. And then Gunther's trying to use the arm throughout the match, but his arm hurts. He tries to go for this, but his hand. I mean, they had a very good psychological hard-hitting match. And then finally, uh, Gunther Which, how Everything you said, how much him. sense does everything you say make where it's just like, this should have never been into question. It should never be into question. Shouldn't that be the story of a Nakamura and a, and a Gunther? Would be him chopping well, him down? Well, it should. And that's they what, like. They like to do idiot-proof matches for these fans. Like, oh, you know, don't work two body parts. They'll get confused. Just work one. Well, he worked several here. And they had a great match, and uh, Nakamura got powerbombed and pinned, so Gunther retained the title. And uh, overall, good SmackDown. Good show. Yeah. You know, Tom, it was abundantly clear this week that I just don't get enough respect. Excuse me? I feel I deserve a little bit of credit for your, your recent success. You want to take credit for my victory in the G1 Climax? You can fuck off. Why don't you put your money where your little mouth is and get in the ring with me? No. If you, if you really want to take credit for this shit. There's a tweet from August 3rd. Who wants to make it happen? I'll team with Debbie Malenko. Why don't you call up Billy Starks and why don't you step in the ring against me and her, huh? I'll text yeah, her right, right now. I'll be in Chicago all out weekend. How about that? I'll call up Mikey. The black label? Yeah. Debbie, are you available all out weekend? Look at those arms. Brian's not even in ring shape for this. Show me yours, Tom. Huh? Look at this. Go back and forth. Huh? Go back. Jared, put yours up. Go back. 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 Oh, yeah, who's not in ring shape now, motherfucker? She can't do it. She can't do it? She can't do it. This is like when we grappled, Brian, and you clearly tapped. Oh, fuck off. I... What a dick. Oh, so now now you're getting fired up? Well, fuck, dude. You know, we can settle God. this. You know, we can settle this. You meet me in Chicago. I'm, I'm in. You've agreed. Yeah, I've agreed because you don't have Thanks a fucking me. partner. I will beat dude. your ass silly. <laughs> yeah. I'm texting him right now. Mikey, by the way, okay, yes, all caps. I'm not the only killer that you're going to be in there with, Brian. Killer 
Kelly. See you in Chicago. Although I, I was just alerted that the show is at 11 o'clock p.m., so I, I may have to pull out. That's past my bedtime. So if you're going all out weekend, Black Label Pro, Friday, September 2nd. I can't wait to beat your ass. Not going to happen. It's been years in the making.